Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Kunal Amin, PG second year resident, MD radio diagnosis from Maharishi Markandeshwar University, Mulana, Ambala. The topic that I will be speaking on today is male lung deformity. Male lung deformity refers to the bowing of the radial shaft with increased interosseous space and dorsal subluxation of the distal radio ulnar joint. Male lung deformity can be bilateral in 50 to 66 percent of patients. It often occurs as a rare congenital deformity and does not usually manifest until 10 to 14 years of age. It may also be seen as an acquired consequence of trauma to the growth plate. It is more common in females by a 4 to 1 ratio and presents with a deformity, decreased grip strength, often with pain in the affected wrist, and limitation in motion especially in extension and supination. The common mechanism for all causes of male lung deformity is premature closure or failure of the development of the ulnar side of the distal radial physis. Arrest of epiphyseal growth of the ulnar and volar portions of the distal radius leads to shortening of the radius and relative overgrowth of the ulnar. It may be seen as an acquired consequence of the trauma to the growth plate. In radiological features, we see radial bowing of the radius, increased interosseous space, dorsal subluxation of the distal ulna, positive ulnar variance, and medial downward sloping of the radius metaphysis with wedging of the proximal carpal row, forming a V shape with proximal herniation of the lunate bone forming its apex. Here is an image of the X-ray showing the same points. This image shows normal wrist versus a male lung deformity. In the male lung deformity, we can see the end of the ulnar bone does not fit properly with the end of the radius and protrudes on the back side of the wrist. This MRI image is showing the same thing. Now we move on to talk about the carpal angle. The carpal angle is defined by two intersecting lines, one in contact with the proximal surface of the scaphoid and lunate and the other line through the proximal margins of the triquetrum and the lunate. The normal value is between 130 degrees to 137 degrees. When this value is increased to 139 degrees, it is seen in bone dysplasia, Down syndrome. When it is decreased to less than 124 degrees, it is seen in male lung deformity, Turner syndrome, and multiple exostosis. Let's talk about the ulnar variance. Ulnar variance is measured as the length of the ulna compared to the distal radius. The drawing on the left represents ulnar neutral, which is when the ulna is two, 0 to 2 mm shorter than the radius. The middle drawing represents the ulnar negative where the ulna is more than 2 mm shorter than the radius. The drawing on the right represents an ulna positive variance in which the ulna is longer than the radius. Now we talk about the radial inclination. Radial inclination is exaggerated in male lung deformity. In this image, we see all the parameters that are used to calculate and define the radial inclination. The normal value is 23 degrees or in with a range of 15 to 35 degrees. The radial inclination angle is increased in male lung deformity by 36.7 degrees or higher. Now we move on to talk about the Vickers ligament. The distinguishing feature of true male lung deformity is the presence of Vickers ligament. Vickers ligament is an anomalous hypertrophic volar radiolunate ligament thought to tether the medial radial metaphysis and triangular fibrocartilage complex, the TFCC, to the palmar surface of the lunate. The ligament restricts the medial and, and volar growth of the radius by exerting a compressive effect on the physis, resulting in the characteristic radiographic features. Here is an MRI showing the same thing.
In male lung deformity, conserva conservative methods have been proven ineffective. So the only option remains is surgery. Below are a list of all the surgeries that are possible for this deformity. And these are my references. Thank you everybody.